The reason why I call companies like OpenAI Empires is because both because of the sheer magnitude at which they are operating and the controlling influence they've developed in so many facets of society, but also the tactics for how they've accumulated an enormous amount of economic and political power. And that's specifically that they amass that power through the dispossession of the majority of the rest of the world. And I highlight many parallels in the book for how they do this, but one of them is that they extract an extraordinary amount of resources from different parts of the world, whether that's physical resources or the data that they use to train their models from individuals and artists and writers and creators, or the way that they extract economic value from the workers that contribute to the development of their technologies and never really see a proportional share of it in return. There's also this huge ideological component to the current AI industry. Sometimes people ask me, why didn't you just make it a critique of capitalism? Why do you have to draw on colonialism? And it's because if you just look at the activities of these companies through a capital lens, it actually doesn't make any sense. OpenAI doesn't have a viable business model. It's committing to spending $1.4 trillion in the next few years when it only has tens of billions in, in revenue. The profit motive is coupled with an ideological motive, this quest for an artificial general intelligence, which is a faith-based idea. It's not a scientific idea. It is this quasi-religious notion that if we continue down a particular path of AI development, that somehow a kind of AI god is going to emerge that will solve all of humanity's problems or damn us to hell. And colonialism is the fusion of capitalism and ideology. I realized this was the frame to also understand OpenAI, ChatGPT, and where we are in this particular moment with AI.